Zimbabwe has already run up a $2 billion bill on imports for the first five months of this year. In the same period, exports have slumped 19% to $949 million. A firming and widely used U.S. dollar has attracted a flood of foreign goods, many of them manufactured locally too, but at prices that can't beat the imports. Coming off the back of a more than 10-year-long recession and now unable to compete with cheaper imports, many industries here have had no choice but to shut shop. Those that haven't are operating at a third of their capacity. They've welcomed the new measures, which will not only strengthen their capacity, but also attract investment. The issue here is to encourage investment into the country. The investors at the moment, they, 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 there's no way they can have appetite to come and invest where their market is. If they can easily just send their products willy-nilly into Zimbabwe. He cites the cooking oil industry, where imports were banned and now at least two foreign investors have set up plants locally. But amidst the cheers are fears that protected industries will become uncompetitive. Protectionism on its own is never a good thing. What you should do is always to say, how do I ensure that my local player is enhanced in terms of their ability to compete against a foreign product? and to be able to get that product into another market. Even as these measures come up, we need to say, how do we get these companies to be always conscious that there's a consumer, and that consumer has a choice, and that you must worry about price, you must worry about packaging, you must worry about availability. Historically, Zimbabwe's borders have been porous, raising the specter of the same banned products finding their way back undercover. Very soon, we we are not even going to get them in the country, to get weaves in the country, which means I can't even get my hair done. Or otherwise, you, I will have to go and look for them. Maybe at the black market, people will start smuggling them in, which means they'll be so expensive. Sad news for women folk, but a necessary measure, according to the government, which says this will stop cash leakages and get local industries up and running again. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.